time they've signaled, you're almost guaranteed to lose money if you follow them. Almost guaranteed to lose money if you follow them. Do you think I'm joking? Let's take a look at some of these signals, so-called signals in these so-called areas based on a toxic candle. Now remember that triggers a sell at the close of the candle. So in other words, what I'd be suggesting is buy at the close of any sell candle and sell at the close of any buy candle to take advantage of the profit take. Now, there's obviously a commercial buyer behind this or a commercial seller behind this. So that means when it retraces back to that level, it could be a nice opportunity for you to buy into. So let's take a look and see if any of that trade turns out to be true. So in other words, we'd be buying at the end of this candle here. We'd be buying at the end of this candle here. And we'd be selling on these candles here. I'm not saying the indicator's wrong. The indicator's obviously correct. But the idea is that obviously uh, by the time you see things like this, it's too late. That's my point, right? It's too late by the time you see these types of signals. So when we see that as, as ideas, let's take a look and see if that would have resulted in profits. Okay, so you can see there's a sell candle there. That's actually moved, doesn't it? So there's a sell candle there that would have put a buy into place there. There's a sell candle there that would have put a buy into place. There's a buy candle there that would have put a sell into place. There's a buy candle there and that would have put a buy into place. There's a buy candle there that would have put a sell into place. You see it? See those trades? Every single one of them would have made money by doing the exact opposite to what the indicator suggested. But think about it. If that is a toxic sell candle, and I'm not disputing that it is, then there is a good area there for selling into that narrative, isn't there? If that's a toxic buy candle with these two greens, I'm not disputing that it is, and that might be a really good area to buy from going forward. So you can see that just recognizing the toxic candles, which is what we talk about when we talk about bullish or bearish order blocks, right? So these are areas that we can start to recognize as possible areas for trade. Now, because these are big candles, there's always more likely to be a profit take on these big candles. And you can recognize these things. If you go backwards, you can recognize these things. So there's a big uh, buy candle there. So that would probably be a nice easy sell. It was an easy sell. You can see the profit taking made some easy money. But the toxic buyer is obviously in true. The toxic buyer, it's not a, it's, it's not invisible. The toxic buyer is true because that's why you get the big candle, right? That's why you get the big candle. Let's look backwards even further. There's another one right there. So you'd sell the end of that candle, but obviously the toxic candle came from this buy zone here, which results in another buy opportunity swinging away from that level. You see it? There was obviously a couple of toxic buyers coming off bottom edges here. Now that never flipped over. It did a wee bit and then it pinned back through the level. And then we got another big candle here, which obviously did exactly the same. Another sell came back in here. So there's obviously a very, very strong toxic, uh, toxic trade in here. Very strong toxic trade. And obviously, you know, even when you see these other ones, as I said before, there's going to be profit taking on these candles. Now, if there's already a big pin attached to it, you might just have missed most of your profit taking. You might have missed most of your profit taking, okay? So it really wants to be closing as close to the high or the low of the candle as it can be because then the profit taking hasn't came in yet. Like this trade here, uh, there's very, very small pin at the top edge of that candle. So the profit taking hasn't started yet. So that gives you a couple of clues about the idea of that sell. Now, if that's the sell, that must be a toxic seller from that level, right? So that's a great level to launch maybe sell attacks into the markets. Toxic order flow again, right? Catch up with the right-hand edge of the charts, and you can see a similar type pattern. There's a sell coming in there. It's at a very low price, and obviously the first thing that happens is you could buy for the scalp to come back into that. Well, what happened? You made a lot of money, right? Now, the sell wasn't coming from a balance. The sell was obviously halfway down the list, so the sell probably came from up here, so that's probably got a seller up here. The buy 
again does exactly the same. As soon as that buy candle comes in, the profit takers start coming in and the price slows down and it rolls over. You could have made some money on that buy trade. But now there's a commercial buyer coming in from this balance area here. What about this buy trade here? Well, of course, profit take it. Profit take. So there's your profit take. Where did the buy come from? The toxic buyer in the background. And you can see, obviously, if you wanted to take the sell for the profit take and then buy back in, you could have seen that there might have been a nice couple of easy money trades just there as well. That makes sense? So it's about this idea of just because you've found these big candles, you know, you can actually use them. So whilst the indicator is obviously appallingly bad, it's surprisingly good. Well, I'll say the indicator is appallingly bad. It's not because the objective is to show you the, a big candle. Well, it does show you a big candle. That's So it's 100% accurate about what it shows you. But as a trade signal, it's appallingly bad because it's too late. It's trader six to the party. It's trader six, isn't it? So trader six buying at that stage obviously is nearly always going to be a profit take for the first guys that bought during this stage here that caused that to happen. Yeah. So trader six comes in and starts buying here. Trader ones and twos were buying in here. So you can start to recognize, you know, that recognizing the hard, the fast candle, you don't need an indicator to be able to point it out, do you? You can actually physically see it because that's what we do when we talk about toxic order flow. We talk about making sure that you mark off the big candles, the big toxic candles. And when we look at the big toxic candles, we've got, Obviously, this is just by a definition that's set by the um, by the programmer, isn't it? So, you know, what size a big toxic candle is is obviously open up for a bit of debate, and obviously, time frame references is important. But I've used the five minutes so that it's a big enough toxic candle to make uh, some sort of sense to everybody. It's just called large candle, Everett. It's just called large candle. 